All right, uh, you good? Yeah, I'm good, good? Welcome back to another video, guys. Today we have an Orbia. Okay, I'll get it right again. Orbia. Orca. Orbia Orca M30. Yeah. Okay, I have a very, uh, I have a memory of a fish. Um, lovely bike, orange, uh, very striking color. A couple of guys on my Instagram and uh, YouTube always comment. You guys, you are only, you know, showing off all the expensive bikes. So I'm very glad that I managed to get you onto my channel with a, uh, you know, pretty budget-friendly bike. Uh, Amal, thanks for coming and. Please do tell us about your bike. Okay, so this is my lovely bike. Um, it's an Orbea Orca M30. Um, it's actually my first road bike. I got into road cycling, I think, after watching so many people um, picking up cycling over the circuit breaker period. So I was a bit FOMO and uh, I thought I'd find myself a um, uh, kind of like budget friendly beginner bike for me to start I guess um, so the whole of last year at the end of the year it was quite a challenge trying to find a bike because of the, the stocks they were, were running low because of COVID so uh, I originally did not intend to buy this bike um, I was looking at like Merida or maybe even Giant um, but the there weren't any stocks coming lah so I visited all the shops and everything, Hub Leong and uh, uh, Tay Junction, and then bikes in my size were quite rare to find. So, and then I just happened to chance upon uh, Can Asia's page, and they said that they were bringing this bike in uh, in about three weeks' time. Then, so I basically just on that on the spot um, picked the picked the size that was closest to mine that I thought was right, and then I bought it that night yeah so the story after that I, I mean after buying the bike I think after riding it for a while I realized that it may be a little bit too big but I've managed to kind of like work around it and it's quite a comfortable bike to ride um, I really enjoyed myself um, riding this bike because I think the last bike I had was a fixie bike like five six years ago um, very very different experience uh, it's also has allowed me to be a lot fitter and I've lost quite a lot of weight from cycling as well well, about close to 10 kilos uh, since uh, since last December actually um, and yeah I think it's an overall great experience to own this bike um, a little bit more about the bike um, it's a 105 group set so I think if you uh, if you are into bikes and you watch a lot of bike videos people talk about the 105 as like the group set of the people the group set of the people so I, uh, when I was choosing a bike I thought it was a great platform to start with because if I wanted to upgrade any parts to Altegra or DRS, I it's still quite um, it's still quite compatible handlebars about 40 mm um, and then I have my GoPro mount out in front it's a very unique bike because the handlebar is actually a riser bar so this frame is is um, marketed as a endurance um, road bike so it's supposed to be a little bit more comfortable than your aero bikes but with a bit of aero optimization on the frame itself so it's really very cool cables in front are somewhat integrated so they go in through the uh, head tube and then after that when it comes out it's uh, it runs under the handlebar itself so it's quite clean I think that was one of the reasons why I was attracted to the bike as well um, and then my tips are cyclovation I actually changed my stem I was not stem sorry my seat post uh, because I broke the washer of my stock seat post then I couldn't find the washer so it was quite um, troublesome to find because it's such a small piece a small proprietary piece that I couldn't really find so I just bought a cheap track Bond Rager seat post from Carousel for about $15 uh, my seats I swapped it out as well um, originally it came with a Cell Royale seat I swapped it to a Physic um, Tempo Argo and yeah and I swapped my wheel set as well so these are right parkours they are parkours um, green pearl wheel set 40 mm pretty lightweight it's about 100 uh, 1400 grams uh, for both uh, for both wheels and then uh, my pedals are actually hand-me-downs from a friend uh, it's about close to 10 years old already but I'm still using it it's uh, basically an old look look I think the first version 
not the first version, but quite an old model of the look here. Uh, and I swapped my chains recently after getting it serviced. So it's a gold chain, KMC, I want KMC 11 speed chain. I can't remember which model, but yeah, it looks quite bling on the bike and I quite like it. Like I said, it's been an interesting experience um, riding as well as like assembling the bike itself because um, trying... I, I don't really have a budget to work with, but I don't really want to overspend. So it's always about um, looking out for cheap deals online, exploring different um, different like uh, websites where I can get stuff for cheap. So like the accessories and stuff, I bought it online. Um, there are some places that I found quite you can get quite good deals for bikes. Um, places like we go chain reaction bike in. Uh, these websites are Merlin Cycles. They you can actually find good deals, especially for things that you don't really need, like after sales support, like small little components. So I don't really want to go in. Okay, as much as they say to support the local bike stores, um, I do sometimes. But when I can wait and I would like to save a little bit of money, I will do a bit of uh, due due diligence online. Maybe I also share about my experience like, as a as a road cyclist for for as a big, beginner cyclist I think I would still consider myself as a beginner cyclist it's only been about 11 months since I picked it up very very very, very enriching experience I think there are places in Singapore that you've not really you would not really have explored if you don't have a bicycle or you don't have a vehicle of your own um, so like you know going through the rite of passage of most road cyclists in Singapore LP1 RTIs um, the whole crunchy area um, TMCR so those are places that um, I was very excited to explore on my bike the, the the opportunity that I have to actually ride on them is really actually quite amazing and quite great it's also allowed me to see Singapore in a, in a very different light like you get a lot of sights and sounds that you never really notice or even smells like uh, I'm more of a, a night cyclist so I would cycle along those industrial areas at night and you can actually I don't know somehow in the middle of the night you can smell like maybe the people living in the dormitory dormitories cooking the curry sometimes smells very nice um, never really thought I would have ex uh, expected such uh, smells there um, yeah, and also having um, people to ride with groups of friends I don't really ride in big groups um, not part of any cycling groups or anything but I have like a few close friends that I ride with usually in groups of not more than four or five uh, it's always about just having conversations while we're riding uh, looking for new places to explore together and basically unwind lah, from our daily uh, routines and the fitness aspect as well um, like my first RTI was took me about close to six hours and then now comfortably under four and a half hours so um, it's 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 really uh, uh, I think I think my experience is one of growth where I learn more about everything like myself the country the sport itself like I, I've also picked up not picked up but I also, also started following the World Pro um, the World Tour series um, the UCI World Tour um, so like watching cyclists and how amazing actually to be a cycle to be a road cyclist like you know they are two three hour rides and how fast they do it I think it's really quite amazing to to look uh, to observe and yeah I think that's pretty much about it this has to be by far the most uh I could listen to you talk for the entire day, man. Are you like a professional speaker or something? Teacher. <laughs> You're a teacher, no wonder, man. <laughs> uh, this will be a very easy video for me to edit because there are not many cuts. It's probably just one take and I, I'm a bit lost for words. I, I had a few questions, but I, I lost my train of thought. Um, maybe coming back to um, the, the bike, uh, a bit of technical questions for me. I've never seen um, these wheel sets. Uh, what are these wheel sets and where is it made? After riding for a while, I wanted to get a much, much lighter wheel set. So I did up an Excel sheet and everything and then list down a few models to, to, um, to kind of like uh, narrow down. Um, so I actually came across these while, while I was bike um, shopping. Um, so Crank and Chain uh, in Sentosa. 
they carry BMC bikes and then they brought in this brand of wheels as well so I was reading up about it uh, what really attracted me to them were really the lightweight lah. and the price range is about 1.5 1. 1.6 thousand uh, sorry 1.5 yeah 1.5 1.6k um, they are Pacos so the brand is Pacos um, the Instagram page is right Pacos the model is Grimper as in the French word for climbing um, they are 40 mm deep um, and the weight I mentioned earlier is about 1,400 grams um, and yeah they're, they're brought in by Wright Parkos uh, Andreas at Wright Parkos was quite um, quite helpful uh, with, with me choosing the bike actually I kind of made up my mind already when I entered the store but he was quite nice show, showed me the wheels and everything and, and yeah I, I really like it um, now I'm thinking of going deeper but for now I think uh, these wheels will last me for quite some time uh, quite stiff carbon uh, carbon wheels um, they are made in the UK sorry the brand is a UK brand but I think they are made in China from what I know it's basically uh, I think a lot of wheel set brands they just buy like moles from Chinese factories and then they they market it under their brands so I assume or I would think that this is one such brand because the price range is also not very high so uh, but I got no complaints about the, the wheel set so a lot of a lot of people who buy their wheel sets tend to be um, either triathletes or time trialists because they do like deeper wheels as well as disc wheels as well so I yeah either that or um, like this particular model I think this is one of the few models for like normal road cycling or even climbing lah. the rest are usually deeper they even go up to like 80 mm deep everyone's riding like gp5000 and uh, pirelli zeros but i saw that the the shop that was selling the the wheel sets um they were selling goodyear tires and i thought i wanted to give it a try lah. Uh, very easy to fit like much much easier than a gp5000 you don't need any tools you can just use use your hands to just fit it in um, the problem that I have I think that they may not be as durable as your GP 5000s uh, I may need to change my wheels very uh, my, my tires very soon because it's actually quite bota already la. so the, oh yeah the price of the entire bike the stock build itself is 3.8 three thousand eight hundred dollars um from what i know now the price has gone up by five hundred dollars yeah so i think last year was quite a good time for me to have bought it um plus the wheels i upgraded it so i guess it brings up the price of the bike to beyond five thousand i guess I am 170, 171 cm. Um, the size is 51, and then the my inseam is about, if I recall correctly, is around 77 or 78 cm. So I felt, I thought that this bike was the right, um, based on the measurements on the website. I thought this bike was um, was the right size for me, but. I, I think I was doing it quite late at night, so I maybe read the chart wrongly or something. When I went down to Canada to, to get my bike fitted as well, um, the guy there also mentioned that uh, this might be a little bit big for me. Uh, and then, true enough, while riding, I had a few issues. La. I got myself fitted like uh, with a proper bike fit in June, like six months after I started cycling. It helped me correct some of the things that I had issues with like my shoulders and knees I think I was overreaching as well and the posture was very uh, weird so the bike fitter actually did some modifications and pushed my seat all the way to the front so as a result of that I cannot mount any lights at the back of my seat which is a pity because uh, yeah they would have looked nicer lah, rather than having a light over here uh, coming back to your point on buying things online yeah. i have to agree with you that not necessarily you have to buy everything from a local shop i mean yeah if you think the price is right from a local shop then by all means go ahead right yeah. but oftentimes you get pretty much good discounts online 
And like you've mentioned, you've rightly pointed out that if those things do not require any after-sales service, like probably like a stem, things that are not really moving, and you don't need a bike shop to install it for you, uh, yeah, I think you can get really good deals online. And I think places like Merlin Cycles, if you hit a certain threshold of uh, buying a product, it, shipping is free, right, to Singapore. Uh, last question is uh, overall performance of the bike, and what would you have, uh, or what would you be your next upgrade? Overall performance of the bike, um, the right quality is really quite comfortable. It doesn't rattle as much as I would think, like maybe bikes that are very stiff, like maybe a, a Dogma F12 or more really performance oriented bikes because the bike is meant to be ridden long um, the geometry itself is actually quite relaxed lah. so I guess that's where the comfort comes in can go quite fast it's quite I think my my my, my average speed on the road is between 28 to 30 kilometers an hour. Um, not very fast, I guess, for more seasoned cyclists, but to me, it's quite fast. It's a very comfortable bike to ride. Uh, let's just put it that way. Um, you, if you're not really going for speed, I guess if you're going for speed, you can also ride this bike. Even if you're a, if you're a strong cyclist, you could. Um, but overall, it's really very nice to ride. The total weight of the bike, to be honest, I've not really measured. An estimate? What do you think? Estimate? Okay, the stock weight was 9.2. Uh, without bottle cages, uh, pedals and everything, and the mounts. So by changing the wheel set, um, I think it's around 8.5 now. I, I, sorry, I know I said that was the last question, but uh, I just thought of a few questions. Uh, I would say that you're a rather new cyclist to the sport. So um, as a new cyclist, what are your thoughts about cycling, uh, road cycling, uh, in general in Singapore? Uh, road, road cycling in Singapore, I think it's something that is uh, divisive. Like people will have very strong opinions about it. Uh, I've had my fair share of uh, encounters with uh, very like drivers that are very scary. They ride very close to you and, and in a kind of like even antagonistic way. Um, I've also seen cyclists who don't follow the laws on the road, right? Like beating lights. I, I think it still has a long way to go in terms of uh, being widely accepted, in terms of being something that is uh, not a thorn on, in a lot of people's flesh. Lah. Like those people who ride in very big uh, like pelotons, on Sunday mornings, they're quite scary to me. Um, and then sometimes when I see them on the road uh, and all those like storm videos, or not storm videos, now this is not storm, it's like those viral videos that um, that show cyclists riding in very big groups and everything and then not following any SMM measures, obstructing the road. Um, I can see why um, drivers get very annoyed by cyclists, but I also think a lot of drivers are very unreasonable. Lah. Um, as, a, as a sport, itself I think it's very good Singapore has, has quite a lot of decent places to cycle I enjoy cycling um, late at night simply because I don't really want to deal with the traffic not only from the cars but also from other cyclists like I said I'm a beginning cyclist so I'm still not really used to riding in like big bunches and I really just want to avoid having any unnecessary un encounters that could turn out ugly lah Someone who, let's say, someone uh, is getting into the sport, uh, road cycling. I mean, road cycling, for it's, it's called road cycling because you ride on the roads, right? How does one get comfortable riding on the road, you know, alongside cars and heavy buses? Maybe speaking of, from my f personal experience, um, having friends who are a lot more experienced help. So they will give you pointers on what to look out for, um, to be more aware of your surroundings. Um, and also, I think it takes time. So you could try, like, like what I do, la, I, I ride late at night because buses are not out. Um, you may encounter once in a while your heavy like lorry, the heavy vehicles, but they tend to be few and far in between. So I use that time to kind of like get used to cycling on the road, the experience of it, the feeling of it, and getting used to the bike so that um, it becomes a lot more comfortable and I don't get so panicky when a car or a vehicle comes next, uh, comes close to me. I think it's something that really requires um, patience. Lah. 
So it wouldn't come naturally uh, because it's really quite scary. Um, but I, you can slowly build your confidence from just just riding. I think one very important thing is to just keep on riding. If you hesitate, if you kind of like feel very negative about it, I think um, you would never o- overcome the fear. Lah. Okay, we move on to Instagram Q&A. Uh, you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and you get a chance to ask or roast my next interviewee. So, the first question, is it true that the steerer in the fork is made out of aluminium? This this is something that I found out really, um, recently. Yes, it's true. Um, so, I went down to Trilab because Trilab is one of Obia's other um, dealers in Singapore and they don't bring in this model, the M30. They bring in only M20 and the salesperson basically told me that the M20 has a full carbon steerer but mine uh, because it's the M30 it's the entry level bike um, the fork itself is carbon but the steerer is aluminium so yeah it's true what a sneaky way man these guys putting in uh, aluminium uh, steer right why are there so many spaces why are there so many spaces uh, I'm very lazy to cut lah <laughs> Yeah, I I also like if I cut that it becomes permanent and then I can't really like play around with it. Um, I can drop it, but I don't like the excess stem sticking from the top. Um, maybe the next time around, if I get my bike service, I'll get it cut also lah. But I also don't know how low I want to cut it to. Uh, my friends have been telling me to slam the stem down to get a more like uh, sleek look. I don't really see a need for it lah. But actually, uh, if you don't mind me just telling or asking. Um, because I think if you were to drop it all the way and you want to cut it, I think that would be a very bad idea. I think maybe you got to drop the spacer by yourself and just leave the space up there before you actually cut it. And if it fits, then yeah. Yeah, try it out first, man. If not, you'll regret it. <laughs> Cutting it off, there's no way to get it back up. Why not in a blue colorway? Why not in a blue colorway? When I wanted to buy this bike, I saw three colors available on uh, Canada's page. The white, the black, and the orange. And Obia released these three colors for, for this particular model. La. The only one that was available was orange. So it's more about the availability. La. Um, I would have wanted a black bike because um, it's sleek and everything, but I've grown to love the color actually. It's a very unique color. The paint job is also quite nice. Uh, yeah, it's it reminds me of uh, an orange Lamborghini. La. I love the color, man. Super striking. Yeah. Did you get inspired by GCN to get this Orbia? And do you have a GCN kit too? I guess it... it um, it factored into my uh, decision to buy because when I was choosing, um, when I was when I was reading up about cycling and and like researching on what bike to buy, so GCN is like the best resource to to actually start lah. Whether or not it's really true or whether or not they are right about a lot of things, it's a matter for debate. But they have a lot of resources, and at that point of time, this particular bike actually fe- featured quite a bit. So they did a lot of projects on it, and since. I saw it on sale and I was looking for a bike and I thought like, okay, since they are reviewing so much about it, it has to be a decent bike. Lah. It has, it's not like a, a dart where you know people have problems about it. And then like, there, when I was looking at it, there wasn't much like independent reviews about the bikes yet, I, I guess, because at that time the stocks were not in. So it was a step in the dark, but them having featured on the bike itself having featured on GCN actually made the choice a lot easier lah. do I have a GCN kit? Uh, nope I don't think it's the nicest kit out there and I would rather spend my money elsewhere besides GCN being a very um, informative channel I hope my channel will be up there as well <laughs> is this the OMR or OMX carbon frame? I have no idea man what are the differences? this is the OMR um, the OMR is basically a lower grade carbon, la, uh, a lower grade carbon build up. Uh, if you look at the Tour de France, right, um, the Euskadi Euskettel team rides Orbea, their, their frames are all OMX. Because OMX is basically a little bit more optimized. The, okay, the, layout, the carbon layout is better. It's also a little bit more aero optimized because the seat post is D shaped. So this is a standard round seat post, la, so you can just swap it with any seat post quite easily. Um, the, OM, the OMX is D-shaped, 
so it's supposed to be a little bit more aero. Um, OMX is lighter, OMR is not <laughs> as light. What other differences are? I don't think there's any other much differences. The geometry is the same. Yeah, it's mainly about weight and the uh, st stiffness, lah. Stiffness, the cause the carbon build up for the OMX is is a lot better, a lot higher grade and it's more for performance and racing. So this is more for, I guess, the likes of me and like and if Eric, your normal cyclist. Uh, last question, are you subscribed? <laughs> Actually, no. Eh. <laughs> yeah, because... Thanks for the honesty though. Yeah, yeah, because to be honest, right, I only came across you guys when I was approached. And then I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> then I followed on Instagram, and then I watched the videos on, on, on YouTube whenever one is being released, but I don't remember subscribing. I'll do it later lah. I, I appreciate the honesty, man, because there are some guys where I interviewed and I can tell they are lying straight into my face that they are subscribed, but they are not. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a great, great session. Thank you so much, man. Uh, I hope you subscribe. It's okay if you don't. Uh, I only want loyal subscribers to who continue watching my videos. Thanks so much and I, I wish you all the best, man, in your cycling journey. If you get a new bike, do approach me and we can film your bike and we'll see what's the progress from there. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Bye-bye.